Welcome to the Vegas Insider Channel here on YouTube as we take a look at the final leg of the Triple Crown coming up this Saturday in Elmont, New York. It's the Belmont Stakes. Kevin Rogers with you along with the big A, Anthony Stabile. That's right, content producer Naira Betts. Also, his work on Fox Sports, America's Day at the Races, as well as the co-host of Talking Horses. And Anthony, before we get to the Belmont Stakes, quickly a recap on the Preakness you did like early voting in that one, and early voting got the money. Also, Epicenter, another tough finish, could not get uh, first place, just like in the Kentucky Derby, finished second. So quickly, what did you think about the Preakness? Yeah, let's hope we could have as much success in the Belmont that we did in the Preakness, Kevin. Um, good race from early voting. Epicenter ran well. I think Epicenter is maybe a little tired at this point, knocked out. I, don't th I think that's the biggest reason we don't see him in the Belmont Stakes. And now we have the final leg of the triple crown with early voting taking a taking a pass on this to point to some of the summer races that mile and a half is a little daunting for some we do have kentucky derby upset a second biggest price in the history of the run for the roses rich strike he's here uh and yeah you know uh getting ready to wrap this up the 154th belmont stakes again let's hope for the same success we had in the preakness here in the test of the champion you mentioned Rich Strike, Anthony. 80-1 to one odds to win the Kentucky Derby. Kind of came in at the end as far as one of the alternates and ended up winning the Kentucky Derby. Now, all of a sudden, 7-2 to odds. Didn't race in the Preakness, but now back for the Belmont. A lot of people are going to have their eyes on Rich Strike. What do you think about Rich Strike now, second time around? Literally got in minutes before scratch time when Wayne Lucas decided to scratch Ethereal Road, who we also had to take out of this Belmont stage. He was pointed to that. Didn't enter yesterday when we drew the test of the champion over at Belmont Park due to a quarter crack. Rick Strike got in very late in the game. Number 21. You don't see too many 21s. I would imagine that's the first 21 to win the Kentucky Derby. Um, you know, the, the big thing with him is you got 80 to 1 of the – if you were lucky enough, fortunate enough, whatever word you want to use, I still can't figure it out. Um, if you were lucky enough to get the 80 to 1, he's 7 to 2 on the morning line. Now we have the old state saying around here, if you didn't go to the wedding, how can you go to the funeral? So he's kind of hard. Big. I'll tell you this. I'm a little skeptical of him. I, Churchill Downs is a quirky surface, and his two biggest races by far in his career was a 17-length maiden win at Churchill and then the Derby upset. He really seems to be doing quite well at Belmont Park. He shipped in last Tuesday night into Wednesday morning late, got here at like 2 in the morning, Went to the track the next day, and he has impressed everyone since he's been here. He's been here over a week now. He's really taken to the track well, galloping like two miles a day. I'm not a fan. He's going he's to prove it to me again. And, you know, if we get into the whole thing of getting around Belmont a mile and a half, Sonny Leone's going to ride the track for the first time and ride that mile and a half uh, distance for the first time at Belmont. It's weird because it's once around. And there's no track in the world like it on the dirt, anyway. He, is he still up against it? Yeah, from a from a gambling point of view, he's not a good gamble at seven to two, four to one, three to one, whatever the public uh, sends him off at, just because he obviously paid one hundred and seventy dollars the last time he won. So, if you made money with him in the Derby, feel free. He's just he's tough for me to take at a short price coming back in the Belmont. Now, Anthony, the favorite, the morning line favorite, We the People at two to one odds. What are your thoughts here on We the People maybe taking home the Belmont? He's looking to do something that my favorite horse of all time, Tonalist, was the last to do in 2014. And that's when the Peter Pan, which is the traditional prep four weeks before the Belmont here at Belmont Park, and then take the test of the champion. That track, Kevin, at Belmont on Peter Pan Day, it rained and it got a little goofy little slick course was labeled good it was sealed for those of you that don't know what that means the rain was coming in and they will try and tighten the track up they will literally press the track down and seal the track so that the water hits the top and stays on the top and you can float it off so the track got a little wet and a little slick and he handled it he's bred to like it his pedigree tells you he's going to love a wet track he did he was able to get loose on the lead and he was able to just keep going those those wet tracks those sealed wet tracks more often than not, produce figures that can be a little misleading. And his 103 buyer speed figure was 14 points faster than anything he had earned. He's a nice horse, don't get me wrong. I picked him third in here. 
because he has a tactical advantage. He is loose on the lead in here. A couple of other horses, namely, how, namely Howling Time, was supposed to come in from Kentucky, did not come in. And he is now loose on the lead. He's drawn the inside. Flavian Pratt's made quite an impact since switching his tack from California to the East Coast. He's going to be loose on the lead. He's two to one. Like the rest of them, he has to get the mile and a half. He's never been beyond a mile and an eighth. Um, he can obviously win this race. I don't want him as the favorite. And I'm not completely sold that his fig isn't a little trumped up from the moisture in the track last time. All right, Anthony, one horse that you're a fan of is Nest at eight to one odds of Philly. What do you think about Nest chances for uh, the Belmont this week? Yeah, she's my pick. She's also a pretty good narrative. You know, you have the Derby winner, Rich Strike, is a good narrative. She's a good narrative. Her trainer, Todd Pletcher, Hall of Famer, he's won three Belmont stakes. He did it as recently as 2017 with Taprit. He did it in 2013 with Palace Malice. And back in 2007, he won it with Rags to Riches, a Philly, beating a Colt, one of the best Colts we've seen in the last 20 years, in Curlin. Nest is a daughter of Curlin, so it would kind of come full circle. Yesterday at the post position draw for the Belmont, Todd was talking about how this race has been in mind. When you enter, when you nominate horses to the Triple Crown, it happens all the way back in January, and you'll always see a handful of fillies nominated. She was nominated, and Todd Pletcher said yesterday, she wasn't nominated with the Kentucky Derby or Preakness in mind. She was nominated with the Belmont Stakes in mind. This was the race they thought they could target with this filly. And I could not agree with them more. I've been looking at her as a Belmont kind. I always, with the success we've had at the Belmont over at Vegas inside of the last 15 years, I start looking for my Belmont horses when people start looking for their Derby horses. Uh, she was one that I was interested in. I had talked to Todd and one of his assistants about it. And, you know, she has the, the disposition. She has the running style. She certainly has the pedigree. She's, like I said, by Curlin, out of an AP Indy mare. AP Indy won this race back in 1992. So she has the pedigree. She's a full brother to a horse. She's a full sister to a horse named Idol. Her full brother won the Santa Anita handicap going a mile and a quarter. So she has plenty of foundation and plenty of pedigree. And this was a, a, a filly that Todd, Never ran shorter than a mile. More often than not, he'll start his horses in sprint races. She never ran shorter than a mile. In fact, she debuted going a mile and a half, she, she a mile and a 16th. She won and cut back to a mile to run in a stakes race, and she fell three quarters of a length short. It just wasn't long enough for her. So this is a horse that he's always wanted to get distance into this filly, and now he gets the ultimate distance. We talked about how we the people's loose on the lead. I think she's going to be sitting second, and I think tactically – She's going to be in the best spot over most of her rivals. Maybe the worst-case scenario, she's laying third. I'm fine with that. Jose Ortiz is going to ride her um, for the first time. Jose and Todd teamed up in 2017 with Taprit, and he was a horse who didn't have a lot of speed, but going the mile and a half, they go so much slower on the front end that horses are kind of drawn in more. Taprit was more, never more than three lengths off the lead. He set a really nice loose pocket on the inside. I envision her getting the exact same trip. I really like her. I've been hoping that they were going to run her in the Belmont Stakes. It's only eight horse field. I think she's going to work out a good trip. She's going to be a good price. She's eight to one on the morning line. She has a horse in her own barn in Mo Donegal. He might even be favorite when the race goes to post. Um, it'll be close between him and we, the people. But, you know, you're going to get a better price from a guy who targets the Belmont Stakes every year. Todd has an amazing record in the race. I think she's really dangerous at a good price. We'll see if Jose Ortiz can get us home again. He, of course, piloted early voting in the Preakness. Now, Anthony, a couple long shots. Everyone wants to throw a couple bucks on it. Skippy Longstock and Golden Glider, 20 to 1 in the morning line. Take a flyer on either of those two or not? No, nah, they're not for me. If you want to take a horse that's going to be 8, 10, 12 to 1, Barber Road, the number 8, um, He's going to get Joel Rosario, two-time Belmont Stakes winner. He rode my boy Tonalist back in 2014, Sir Winston in 2019. Joel knows Belmont as, as well as any jockey in the world right now. Uh, and He gets a rider change from Ray Gutierrez, who quite frankly did nothing wrong. But the Belmont is such a unique beast. Mile and a half oval, once around. You can kind of get lost there. You almost have to make I'm, – I'm, I'm, a, I'm a loyalist. You almost have to make this change when there's a guy like Joel Rosario available. And again, Ray Lou did nothing wrong. But when you're so familiar with the track and have had so much success in the race itself, getting around that mile and a half, you have to make that change. He's the only long shot I really want. I picked the race. I think Todd's going to win one too. 
I picked the race Nest, Mo Donegal, We the People, Barber Road, 3618. But if you want the price, I think Barber Road, the number eight, with Joel Rosario for John Ortiz, uh, is the way you want to go. So, Anthony, your winner for the Belmont Stakes when it's all said and done? I love Nest. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. We have a bet uh, on Belmont Day. It's a Met Mile Belmont Stakes double. I am going to take a very, very big swing. There's a horse named Flightline coming in from California for the Met Mile. He's uh, he's all the all the rage. And I think Bill Mott and Speaker's Corner are waiting for him, and they're going to beat him. So I'm going to make a pretty big double. Speaker's Corner onto Nest and uh, try and get that home. The numbers would be 2-3. You ask wherever you play, head over to Naira Betts to play. We had a bunch of two-day wagers Friday and Saturday. We'll have them – we'll have – Tickets made out over at Vegas Insider. Um, the double, though, that Met Mile Belmont Stakes double, the numbers would be 2-3, Speaker's Corner to Nest. Um, and I'm going to try and build a little Nest egg. Uh, it was terrible. I can't even believe I said it, but that's what I'm uh, – that's the plan on Saturday. It's not – you know, it's great. I love – this is my favorite race of the year. My favorite racing day of the year, more than Derby Day, more than the Breeders' Cup. You know, I'm a, I'm a hometown kid. I've lived in the same house my whole life in Queens. So, you know, I've spent hundreds of days at Belmont Park. This is my Christmas when it comes to horse racing. So I've been waiting for her. I've been really, really hoping. And I kept a, more normally I blurt my mouth out about the Belmont Stakes. I kind of kept this one quiet because it's a Philly and it's a little off the reservation kind of thinking. But Todd's done it before. She's going to be a good price. She has the right pedigree. She has the right running style. I think she's going to be really, really tough. I'm looking forward to getting eight to one on Nest on Saturday. The 154th Belmont Stakes at Belmont Park up in Elmont, New York. Anthony Stabile does a great job of covering the horses. The final leg of the Triple Crown. So we wrap things up for the Triple Crown this Saturday. Anthony Stabile, content producer. Naira Betts, also co-host of Talking Horses and America's Day at the races on Fox Sports. Anthony, we appreciate the time as always. Thanks again for your analysis. We'll talk to you again soon. We'll talk to you from Saratoga, Kevin. Can't wait. All right, that sounds good. That's Anthony Stabile. And before we head out, I want to tell you about Twin Spires. And for new users only, a great deal. A $400 sign-up offer. Use the bonus code VI Racing. Full terms and conditions apply. Again, new users only. And check them out at twinspires.com today. For Anthony Stabile, I am Kevin Rogers. Thanks a lot for watching. And as always, best of luck with your bets.